Today's lesson is how to play over 100 songs just using open chords and your guitar. So uh, the trick to this is for anyone who's looking to sing and play guitar and they're having issues and they're like, man, I'm struggling so hard with getting these bar chords and all this stuff done. So personally for me, I didn't come from that that struggle because I was always a guitarist first. So I had a bunch of like bar chords everywhere. And what I find with my students is, and especially people who watch me play, they're like, oh man, that's all great and fine and well for you to do what you do. But how can we recreate what you do moving around the fretboard, but with just open chords? And so this is for you guys. So basically what we're gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna teach you a little bit of music theory, so don't be afraid. It's very, very simple. There's just things about it. I'm just gonna tell you, just, just believe it as fact because it is fact, it never changes. Uh, and then that's all you need to worry about. So the first step to try to learn a lot of songs and try to keep all of the songs in your brain and not have a hard time is to approach it from a space of numbers. So whenever I learn songs, I look at songs as numbers, not as like G, C, D or whatever. I think uh, one, four, five, which is interesting. So the major scale, which is a really, really, oh, hold on, it's like I haven't got a guitar pick. Give me one second. Oh, uh, uh, running out of time. Editor, please cut this out. Uh, so basically what we're gonna do is, a major scale goes like this. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, di, do. Super simple. Now, if I start on one note, and I skip one note, and then I skip another, I get this. Do, mi, sol, which is what we call a triad. Now, if I do that starting on the first note, I get a major chord. If I start on the second note, minor chord, and then so on. And then that's what we call diatonic chords. So now every song usually fits within there. I'm saying like every song, I'm saying like, 85% of songs, songs like written in the 80s, things like that, a couple of like really clever musicians might change it around, but even then, even in those songs where they do wild stuff like that, you can possibly get away with just like skipping those chords and then just like singing over the top of it. But for the basics, that's how it works. So the first chord, number one, always a major chord. Second chord, always a minor chord. Third chord, always a minor chord. Fourth chord, major. Fifth chord, major. Sixth chord, minor. And then the seventh chord is diminished, but we don't like that one. That's barely used. Um, and then you start back at one. Now, majority of pop music is going to sit within the realm of one, two, four, five, and six. So there's only five chords that you need to get down. So the reason why they do this is those are the main chords that create tension and resolution within music. They're the things that create the harmonic movement that you want. So one and six create a sense of home. And then two and four create a bit of like movement. There's a little bit of tension that happens there. And then five is a lot of tension. That's where we get Tito. So that's where you get that. So uh, I think it's play okay. No, I'm not even gonna go into the nerdy stuff. But uh, basically that is the only musical theory you ever need to know about music, which is one is major, two is minor, three is minor, four is major, five is major, six is minor. And that is it. Seven is diminished, but we don't really care about that one. Um, now I'm gonna give you this immediately in practice. So I'm gonna use open chords only using the key G. So G. So say I'm gonna play Chicken Fry. Chicken Fried by Zach Brown Band. I know we are a lot of country fans out there. So Chicken Fry is G, D, C. Those are the only three chords that you ever play. Now, if I look at them, I'm like, okay, it's a one, five, four. So one, and then you got five, and then four, and then one, five, bang. So the reason why it's important to think that way is it makes it a lot easier because I'm gonna give you a Google document, which is going to have all the songs that I already currently have. And I'll just put the numbers in for you guys. And I'll put you the capo of how we're going to do this in the original key. 
and then you guys can do whatever you want. So if that means like, hey, well, fuck this. This song is like definitely not my vibe right now. I want to go in a lower key because I can't sing it there. You can change the key. But everything will be set up so that you guys can play every single song just using a capo and open chords. Um, so that is the template of how we're approaching this. So you got one, five, four, one, five. And so that's how I see things. Now, Brown Eyed Girl is a G, C, G, D. One, four, one, five. Really simple. Uh, what's another example? Uh, wagon Wheel is uh, one, five, six, four. One, five, four. Now I can move that anywhere on the fretboard if I think that way. So ideally what I want you guys to do is just to be able to see numbers and to see that literally every single one of these songs are the same. There's no fancy things happening in music, especially when it comes to harmony. Harmony is like the one thing where you can't really do dangerous stuff. Um, and so if you do that, you kind of lose listeners. The more fancy the harmony gets, you kind of like step in further and further away. And um, typically, if the harmony is quite challenging or they're going to do something fancy, they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to add like a, a diminishment, like a minus seven flat five, or they're going to do like some, some fancy chord. It'll be like one instance that they do that. And then that chord, like the sequence is so, so repeated that you will just be able to do it all the time quite easily. It's just like a little bit of a, a shift, but essentially that's what the numbers are. You can replay this. If it doesn't make sense, I will make a brand new video for you. Just type in the comments, be like, Luan, you're not making sense. Please make a better video and I'll do that for you. So let's just jump into the two positions that you're going to have to learn to play every single song with open chords. Now, first position, are you ready? It's the key of G, boom. Now, I'm gonna give you the main open chords, how, how technically you should play them. And then I'm gonna give you the, the Luan way, particularly when I approach this stuff, I'm approaching it from like, how can you play and sing? So this is for the playing and singing people, um, the easy way. But the correct way is, um, especially I don't wanna get roasted by Guitar Heroes, uh, <laughs> is you're gonna play a G chord, G open chord, super simple. And then the next chord, the two, oh, I just dropped my pick, is A minor here. Now we're not gonna be playing B minus, because very rarely do we do a three chord. Um, but if you do want to do it, what you can do is you can still not do a bar chord. What you do is you get your third finger starting from the fourth fret, fourth string, and you're just going down. Four, three, two, down the strings, and you just play those three strings. But we're not gonna play that. Um, so you got G1, A minor two, and then we're gonna go C4, and then D is our five chord and then E minor is our six. Bang, super, super easy. Now, let me grab my pick again, or I'll just grab a new one, because I have lots of them in my pockets. <laughs> Magic, wow. Anyway, so here we go. The next chord that you're gonna play uh, is the easy mode version. So we did the correct mode version for you guys. Now, this is how I would do things, because I am lazy and I really don't care. And my goal when I'm singing and performing is I want the vocal rhythm to just be as perfect as possible. And when you are in that zone, you want to get that perfect. And then you can be fancy with your guitar playing. But if you can't deliver a great vocal rhythm, uh, get the lyrics right and get the melody right, then you doing fancy stuff on the guitar is just not going to help you um, achieve your goals right away. So the way I like to do this is... Um, you can start here, I pretty much eliminate the first string, so you don't even have to strum the first string. So say I'm playing a G chord, I got it here like this with my third, my third finger on the third fret there. So I got one. So this is for the say, for instance, I'm playing chicken fried, because we've already talked about it. It's a one, five, four, and those are the only chords I have to play. Now I'm like, if I know that that's the case, I'm gonna play a G right like this, so one. And then I'm going down to the five chord, which is the D. So all I'm doing is just dropping my first finger down to the, to the third string. And now I have to go to a C and I move my first finger up. I put my second finger down 
on the third fret fifth string. And people will be like, but that's not a C chord. And you would be correct. It is C add nine. So technically it's not a C chord. It's not like a fancy C chord. It's not a correct C chord. It is just an easy way to get through the fretboard. So this is how you're going to go. You're going to go. Now, if you're playing on guitar on its own, it does sound not like, you know, but if you're singing and playing guitar, you know a lot of chicken fried, cold beer on a Friday night, pair of jeans that fit just right, in the radio world. Now you can see I didn't have to do anything with my left hand. Uh, it was just literally just going up, down, up, down, up, down. I didn't have to do any crazy movements. So for the beginner guitarists out there, it's so easy. It's like, it's free, free real estate. So that's the easy mode way to do it. Um, I would definitely approach it. That's, that's the only hack that I have to the easy mode stuff. So, you know, you got G, D, C. If you want to add an a, E minor, you can just go down to like this. Um, if you need to do A minor, that's when you kind of have to move over there. But you know, it is what it is. I can't give you, I don't have all the super hacks, but that's the best hack that I know to get through singing and playing. Now that's your first shape. So that shape moves all along the fretboard. So say for instance, I write down on the, on the sheet and I'm like, all right, we're going to be playing wagon wheel. The key of wagon wheel is going to be capo second fret G. So right here. And then that's what it will look like. And you would go G. So wagon wheel is a one, five, six, four, one, five, four. And so you go one, five, six, four, one, five, four. And boom, you just got wagon wheeled. Nice. Um, so that is how I would approach it. So, and that's how I'm going to write it down. So even though wagon wheel isn't technically in the key of A, the way that you guys will be looking at it, it will be capo, second fret, and then I will put G, and then you will see the numbers, which will be one, five, six, four, one, five, four, four, and then that's it. And so then in such a short amount of time, you can see how quickly I'm going through this. I'm just basically zooming as much as I can to give you this information. You basically have it all in a really condensed format, and you can just be like, okay, well, now all I have to do is just sing and learn how to play this. Um, and also just, you know, sidebar, like quick side quest when we're going on this. When the reason why I'm not going to actually write out these chords in a way that you would be, you, you would be used to seeing them. Normally you would see the chords and they would have like lyrics and then the chord above it. Or you would see it written in like a chord chart kind of thing. I'm literally just going to give you the numbers. And the reason for that is I want you to grab the recordings I want you to have the number in front of you and I want you to start training your ear to hear the chord changes and you play to them. So all recordings, like all of the, all the numbers I give you and the key that I give you them in are going to be in the original key. So the original recording that you pull up on YouTube or whatever, it will be in that key. So you will be able to play to it. So say you grab wagon wheel, you know, boom, second fret, it'll be in this key. And you'll be able to play that to it and you will learn to hear the chord changes. You want to start training your ear. Um, and that is the best thing that I can recommend that you do. Now, the second chord shape that you'll need to know, this is a bit more advanced of the open chord shapes because I'm going to give you, I said I wouldn't give you a bar chord, but I am going to give you like a, a ninja bar chord. It's not really a bar chord uh, unless you want it to be. Um, but we're going to jump into the key of C. So now we're going to move to C. And so C is going to be our one. So C is becoming home. So C. And then the next chord is going to be a D minor. And then the next chord is going to be an E minor. So that's our three. And now our four, this is where it gets a bit tricky. We're going to play an F chord. So typically an F chord is a bar chord like this, which is a bit brutal. But here what we can do is we want to start on our fourth finger. Um, Sorry, third fret, fourth string. And then you get second finger, second fret, third string, first finger, 
first fret, second string, just like that. And that's your F right there. Now this is where you can start building the chops to being a bar chord legend. So from here, if you wanna get confident, you can drop your first finger down and then you can bar just two notes and be like, ooh, I'm getting the hang of it. And now as well here, if you have, if you're blessed with nice big hands or you have a small guitar, like I have a small guitar and I have smaller hands, I just throw my thumb over the top and I put it over the sixth fret and I get an F chord. Ooh, danger. Um, but you don't have to do that. You can just play these three notes here. And then G is our five chord. And then A minor is our six. Very simple. So if I were going to play Wagon Wheel in this style, it'd be a one, obviously one, five, six, four, one, five, four. So. So you see, now I'm playing a different key. So that's gonna allow you to move through the fretboard uh, pretty easily. So basically, I typically will favor the G over everything else, just because I feel like it's the fullest sounding one. And then the C shape position is the second best one, I believe, because otherwise you're gonna start throwing in a lot of bar chords. Um, unless someone who's way smarter than me and knows a lot more about guitar um, can tell me a different one that doesn't have any bar chords outside of G, and then I will love you, because that's awesome. Um, but I'm pretty sure C is the closest one you're gonna get to not playing bar chords. Now, the reason why you need to know the C is because you're gonna run out of G space when you get up to here. So once you get to the ninth fret, you start getting pretty dangerous on like sounding like a... You know, you're sounding like... You sound like the Beatles um, doing like, here comes the sun. So what happens then is like your guitar is just so high in the sound. So typically you wanna bring your guitar. I would say moving the capo past the fifth fret kind of kills its sound like that. So you, you see the fifth fret here. You know, it just like loses a lot of its like vibe once it come up here. It just keeps getting higher and higher. Whereas down here, it's still nice and clean. So that's a personal preference of mine. Um, if you're a female singer, like so awesome, you get like this really cool upper range uh, advantage where you can kind of like be capoing up pretty high. And then like, this is for anyone who's like got a higher voice as well. Like, you know, it's not a, it's not a guy girl thing. It's like, Capos are for everyone. <laughs> and what you're gonna do is if you be more delicate, so use your finger picks, like you start using your thumb, your your fingers, um, you can be a bit more cheeky with it. So like. So weird finger picking that. But you can see what I mean. I just took the pick away and now that now that capo that high, it didn't feel too overpowering and like really bright sounding or anything. Cause you're so bright in the pitch that you you know, if you eliminate that part of it, it, it will keep it nice and clean. But anyway, this video has already gone on too long, but I will attach a Google document. Um, that will be Anyone can use it. You can request your songs, ask me, be like, Luan, could you please put this song in here? I need the numbers for it. I will find the numbers for it and I'll put it in the original key and I'll put it in the most easiest capo position for you, either in the G or the C shape. So I hope it helps. I hope this is actually useful. Um, if it's not, just tell me, tell me, cause I'm trying to put a lot of information in a very small video. So, um, Personally, I would rather have like one video for numbers and then another video for the open chords and then another video on how you can apply them to different songs. But I'm testing this out to see if I can fit all of it in one go and it can be like useful to you guys. You can just replay shit um, and give it a good go. But I appreciate you guys so much for hanging out. Thank you for checking out my channel. I'm Luan. Um, 
and I will catch you guys on the next stream and the next video. So please request uh, as many songs as you like. I am more than happy to write out the numbers for you guys and we can build like a an encyclopedia of numbered songs and it would be very, very cool for you guys. Well, good luck and practice hard and I'll catch you guys soon. Bye.